three, two, one, go. Okay, so for this one, for my two presentations this week, um, is uh, Carissa Macrocarpa. So now we know like a carpal, I think we know it. I don't remember which week you guys are in. Um, I, I was doing the stuff about the angiosperms recently, but that might be stuff that's coming up. Anyway, carpal, I don't know, we have covered that, is the female reproductive structure. Um, one single pis uh, stigma style and ovary. If they're fused, then it's a pistil. Anyway, so macrocarpa means like big, big carpal, um, big clanging ovaries there. Check out the fruit on that one. Um, it's edible, although be careful of this. It's in the Apocynaceae. That's the dogbane family. Um, it, it had that milky sap that it exudes is actually um, fairly toxic. I don't know. I think it would give you contact dermatitis, and you certainly wouldn't want to ingest it. So let's go back to the top. I just like to start out with a picture because it's nice to see a picture of the plant. So like I said, um, Carissa macrocarpa. This is a Tuttle variety. It should have another single uh, apostrophe there. Uh, otherwise known as the natal plum, and it's from South Africa. Yep, I did put that in there. It's in the Apocynaceae. Apocynaceae. Apocynaceae, Apocynaceae, whatever. Um, but you do pronounce that. And then it's in the Genshin Alles. Alles, like Uber Alles, which maybe if you saw the last video, you got that if you watch these at all. Um, the Genshin Order. So it's very fast growing. I mean, you see these all over the place. They're really easy to grow here. They're really easy plants. Um, they're pretty. They're kind of glossy green. You know, you wouldn't really look at them twice, except they have these really fragrant flowers, and I did not know that they were fragrant. Apparently they're as fragrant as jasmine, uh, according to Sunset Magazine, uh, Sunset Western Garden Book, and um, then these fruit that can be eaten. Um, they can be made into jellies and all kinds of stuff, which is kind of cool. We used to have one behind my house. Um, a whole hedge, actually, of these guys. Um, the spines are pretty gnarly, so you want to be careful if you're going to go pick the fruit, and I think Sunset mentioned this, which I thought was brilliant, of course. Don't put this right next to a walkway it will poke people. Um, so the fruit is oval red and then sunset says some are green and some are purple. Okay, well, I've never I've never seen that. Um, I swear I would have noticed it. Anyway, it makes a good hedge. Um, Tuttle specifically is very low covering, so it's more of a ground cover. Um, I think it says it gets to be like two to three feet high, but also can be pruned to be, to be kept short. I mean, I wouldn't call three feet high a ground cover, but that's just me. Um, three to five feet wide, or it can grow much, much wider. So I forgot to put this, although I did just send an announcement, to put the Sunset um, Western Garden zones here, which is really a handy thing to have. Um, so we, uh, we, Pasadena, like here in Pasadena around PCC, is, uh, I think it's like zone 24. Sunset zones are slightly different than the USDA zones. The USDA zones were 10B. Um, they are they're only about uh, the cold uh, what what the cold temperature gets down to um, for the winter time, which is not super useful. And the sunset ones are much more useful, but you have to know which one you're in. Check the map, and I, I posted a map in the resources. Anyway, back on topic. Um, it can tolerate a little bit of cold, but it says people grow it down to zone uh, 13, as cold as zone 13, but that it's risky. Uh, very tolerant of different soil types and salt spray. Um, dense, glossy-leaved shrub, um, often a ground cover for Tuttle. And uh, there we go. Let's look at some pictures of this guy. Yes, this pinwheel flower, which is funny because I just did the blue hibiscus just like yesterday, I think, um, that also has a pinwheel flower, but that one is not in this family. But the pinwheel unfolding of the flower as a pinwheel is very um, diagnostic. Uh, distinguishing of the um, Apocynaceae family, the dogbane family. And often also that bane means like poisonous stuff. So it doesn't always, but it often means like bane is a bad thing. It poisons your dog, the dogbane family. And there are some of the spines. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, but Auchis puncture dermis is another name for plants like this. It's a botanical joke. You can tell they're kind of dry. So I think this is the Tuttle right here, and I, I, this may be a different variety. But anyway, so there it is. You can see it in its natural, I mean, unnatural. You can see the landscaping application. Next, moving right along to the Carmel Creeper, which sounds like mean, what a horrible name. Um, Ceanothus, which is a fantastic group of plants, especially for uh, native plant landscaping. Griseus horizontalis, so it grows horizontally. 
I don't know what the Grisius is used for. Uh, Ramnaces, the scene of his family, and it's in the Rosales. It's in the Rose family. I mean, the Rose order. So all these plants have some way, way back ancestors in common. Super glossy, um, oval leaves, really bright, shiny leaves. They can be a little bit funky, kind of sticky and aphid and whatever, but it's so pretty. It really is in general. Um, the flowers kind of pop right out. They're usually, they're blue and they have variations on kind of whitish, bluish, lots of blues and purples in the Ceanothus. Um, so uh, light blue, one inch flower. So this is another ground cover, makes a good ground cover. Um, there's the zones, shoot, I'm gonna have to figure out how to spell that word. Um, so many Ceanothus will die if they get water in the summer. They cannot tolerate that. They just die of fungal infections. Um, but this one apparently is the ground, ground cover ones are a little bit more tolerant of summer water. But it is something to consider. Like you wouldn't just plant it in a regular yard that gets like uh, the grass watered and expect it to do well. Um, two feet high, five to 15 feet wide. So you want to be clear that you have room for this one. Mildly cold sensitive, fire resistant. Apparently deer will eat this down. It's said to a little road bump or something. And uh, I think that was in sunset, which is kind of funny. No, uh, it actually wasn't. It was a different reference, but one of these guys. Um, so if you, if there are deer that are an issue, don't plant this. Uh, Ceanothus have saponins in their flower part. So you can take the flower and like suds it in water and then you could wash your hair. For real, I've done that. So cool. Um, there we go. So it's just kind of a low growing. I mean, this makes it look a little bit mangy. Like I think you probably want to chop that guy off and get it to bush out a little more densely. Um, anyway, but it's a you know, pretty, it's a pretty thing. There we go. And it'd be funny if our neighborhoods were all like this. This one doesn't look super happy. What is this? Is this asphalt? Anyway, I'm done with that one, right? We're done with that one. Next, the night jessamine, the cestrum nocturnum. Um, so it's in the Solanaceae. This is the family of the, of tomatoes and tobacco. And uh, I think eggplants, yeah, eggplants are in this family too. They're different genus um, and a bunch of other stuff, peppers. Um, and then in the Solanales. So if you know, if you've ever seen a tomato flower, um, you can kind of fuzz your eyes a little and be like, oh, I could sort of see that there. Um, these are very tubular blossoms. Um, so they're like a long tube, yeah. Um, white ones followed by white berries. So the white is kind of cool because what that tells you is that it's not using color as a cue for its pollinators because it blooms at night, they can't see color. Color is not very visible to most eyeballs at night. So they use fragrance to attract their pollinators. And so one of the notes about this plant was that the fragrance for many people, it can be a little too much. So you wouldn't necessarily want this to be like right outside of a bedroom door for people because it would be overpowering unless they enjoy the favorite fragrance. Um, it's very fast growing, um, bright flowers. So kind of like, again, these like pops of bright color probably also attracting lots of moths, um, night blooming, night blooming. So the pollinators would be things that are out at night. An arching lax growth habit. So rather than like a really dense shrub, it's, it sends out kind of like arms that um, are lax. Like I don't really know what that word means. I mean, it means lazy, but I don't know in this context. That's what sunset says. It needs to be pinched or pruned to create more dense growth. I think that's part of it. It's like that there's long spaces, internode spaces, where there's not flowers or leaves growing. Um, so it grows fine in Pasadena area. It likes a lot of sun if it wants to grow flowers. Um, it says regular water, which I always suspect means like more water than you would like to do in Southern California. 12 feet high and wide. So this is a big, big shrub. 12 feet high is a pretty big shrub. Um, sprawling shrub with arching branches when left unpruned from the West Indies. I did not even give you the picture. I mean, this doesn't really make it look very attractive to me, um, but that's, that's kind of cool. So this is not something that you want like right in front of your house. Like this would be something sort of in the back of other plants. Like if you have a large planting area, this would be sort of towards the back because it's big. Um, and then, you know, it's just gonna be this sort of like sprawling lax um, shrub. And then occasionally with these really, um, bright small flowers like covered in these little white flowers so it's going to look almost polka dotted from a distance anyway um let's see what else about this guy oh yeah so there was a really cool well shoot i did not oh there it is right here yeah um so this website says that these these are easily propagated by cuttings 
um, that, you know, you just take one and they'll even root in water, which makes me think it would have great face life for my flower farm, but I don't have that growing anyway. Um, but also makes me think it may be invasive because if it, if a branch falls, if they root readily, then it's going to kind of crawl. If a branch falls, it'll root and then it'll just keep on sort of growing around like that. Something to be aware of. Um, fruit and sap are poisonous if ingested. So that's another thing to be aware of. So kind of cool looking. Oh, I think, yeah, super close up. I mean, it's got five petals, five fused petals. Sepals down there, I think. Um, anyway, look at the little anthers and the sticky stigma right there. It's so cool. I just touched its stigma. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye.